I'm not at the den. We're at this carcasses that Hosanna had yesterday. No sign of him at the moment. Maybe he's gone for a drink at Trias Dam in the meantime. But there is a hyena lurking below, patiently waiting. So you can see that there's very little left of the Impala carcass. He's been pretty much stripped clean by Hosanna. He's eaten all of that. Just the one hoof of the Impala hanging down. You can see that metatarsal gland quite clearly now, that big black puffy patch. That's the gland that the impalas have on the back of their back legs. So it's only them that has that. And then the steering box seems as though it hasn't actually been touched yet. It's still dangling high up in the branches right at the top there. He's been turned around. It's not facing the same way. So I think maybe a little bit has been eaten off the rump area. But there's the steering box. And it's a very small steering box. This. It's a little baby. I thought it was slightly bigger than what it actually is. But that's also up in the tree. So the hyenas are at the bottom. No sign of... Hosanna at all. I can't see him anywhere. I'm looking under all the bushes and trees to see if he's maybe just resting. Apparently he was in the tree when we were at Twin Dams, which is not even 10 minutes ago, so I don't know where he's gone, but Treehouse Dam is close enough that maybe he's gone for a wonder just to go and have a little bit of a drink. Now I'm not sure which hyena we've got here. Maybe some of you will be able to identify our hyena. I would imagine it's the same one from last night. That's been lurking around, patiently waiting for some scraps. It's difficult to ID them when they're lying flat like this. I don't see their markings nearly as easily. as I can tell you that it is a young hyena. The ears are completely whole. You can see the spots are still very bright and it's not a very big individual. So maybe one of the offspring like Jan or one of those could be them. So it'll be interesting to know who it actually is. But it's amazing how much of that carcass is been picked clean there's literally nothing left of that impala so i think he must have dropped some of it as well given that the hyenas are around and oh there he is you see him he's right in front of us <laughs> it's amazing their camouflage actually he's sitting directly in front of me just through there somewhere so so where are you hosana there you are so you can see how difficult it is to actually see them sometimes. So luckily he was kind of panting a little bit and his movement caught my eye. But you can see that is one hot full kitty and it's not even gotten very hot yet. He's going to be suffering a little bit later, but a happy cat nonetheless. He's got that face of contentness. So he's just kind of happy that he's got food and, and he's taking it all. And you can see he's smelling a little bit. You can't still be hungry, so I don't think he's going to go back up into the tree anytime soon, and especially with that hyena lurking so close. I'd imagine he's just going to rest here for a while and wait for the heat of the day to pass and then go up later, much like what we saw yesterday. No one likes me. You want to know if hyenas can climb trees? Nope. And that's why the leopard puts those carcasses up in the trees so that these hyenas don't get to the food if he had that on the ground he would have been muscled off by these hyenas and they would have stolen it from him so that's why he's put it up there and, and it's a really clever tactic that leopards have and it's a great skill that he's learned from his mom because some of the other leopards out here tend not to do it so we know that shadow is very bad at it she often leaves carcasses on the ground and they get stolen by hyenas so it seems as though Asana has learned his lesson and he's put his carcasses in trees and that means that he at least can feed off them for quite some time so he's done very well in that regard it's quite funny to watch hyenas you'll be surprised though how high a hyena can jump to get to food i once saw a female down in the Savi, south of the Savi sands called warthog wallow female and she had put up a carcass in a tree that you would think would have been safe it was quite high up i didn't think there would be really too much worry and a hyena came along and it jumped very high and it managed to grab onto just the tip of the leg and that was enough to unseat the carcass and bring it crashing down to the ground and at that stage water wallow had run or walked off to go and fetch her cub and she came back with the cub to a scene of no food the hyenas had dragged it all away and she could see the kind of disbelief in her face as she had hung it perfectly in this branch and i'm sure she thought it was out of the way of hyenas but it wasn't these hyenas jumped probably i would say over their body height that sort of height up into the air and then stretched fully up. It is actually quite a long way. Sorry, Seb, I'm in the way a little bit here. I'm going to try and reposition Seb so that he doesn't have to shoot over my head because otherwise I'm going to ruin things for him. I just don't know if we're going to get a good view of him, Seb, but let's try. Jump. 
Joe, you want to know if leopards roar. Joe, leopards, it's not really a roar more than what we call a saw. So it is a loud sound that is produced that is almost like roaring, but we call it sawing. So it is basically part of the roaring process and it's why leopards are classified as pardus, which is the roaring cats or the cats that are able to produce a roar. But it, we refer to it as sawing rather than roaring. Seb, do you want me to go forward a little bit more? Let's try. No, we'll be all right. It's not too bad. Don't worry. We'll just keep our foot on. There we go. That's so, as much as I can go, Seb, I think for now. But you can see he's watching the hyena. The hyena's moving around, so he's just checking to make sure that this hyena hasn't stolen anything from him. Also, you've got to be aware of hyenas as a young male leopard. But it just goes to show when you have a situation like this with hyena and leopard on the ground, you can see they're both kind of seeing each other. And it's interesting because they're both fairly young individuals. So they know that there's a respect for one another. They're making sure that they're not going after each other and that they respect the fact that they could get injured. And their main focus is the, what's in the tree. So they will leave each other alone. It's only if there was carcass on the ground that the hyenas would be quite a danger to Hasana. Shame, my boy. Are you full and hot? <laughs> Toby, you're wondering why the vultures haven't come to eat the carcass from the tree. Quite simply, they probably haven't seen it. It's not easy to see a carcass from above when there's foliage on it, and this particular tree does have foliage, and so it would be very difficult for the vultures to see those legs dangling from underneath the canopy. Remember, their point of view is from above, so it's not like us that is able to see a carcass in a tree from low down like we have with these ones, and they have a little bit harder time of it. They've got to try and actually see it from above. So things like buffaloes, carcasses, and lions, when they kill, they tend to be out in the open and the vultures see them very easily, but things like this in a tree, very difficult for the vultures to see. You want to go back to your kill again. He seems to be very worried about his carcass. I think with the hyena moving around, he wants to make sure that it's still safe. I wonder if he'll go back up. You are too full though. You're like a beach ball, Hosanna. Look at the size of that tummy. It is full, 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 full. <laughs> and he has this face like he's just had the best meal ever and he's just loving the fact that he's got a full tummy. Look at that, enjoying the breeze blowing. That is one content cat at this stage of the day. Full, but content. And his eyes are getting darker by the day. It almost looks as though they are getting darker. He's kind of started with much lighter eyes than what Shongila had, but they seem to be getting more and more sort of darker as the days go on. Maybe it's just the way the light is hitting them at the moment that it seems that way, but it almost looks as though they're a lot less yellow than what we've been seeing when he was still a cub with Shongile. But he's found himself a perfect spot. He's got a nice bit of shade from another Gwari tree. You can see the Gwari tree just on the right of where he is. And that's providing the perfect place for him to lie down. And it just shows you how well they camouflage. We had been here for about five minutes before we even noticed that he was here. If he lies down flat and puts his head down, you'll find that that mottled sort of color and those spots will all blend in together with the dappled light over that's coming through that quarry tree and it becomes very difficult to see him so lucky we saw him pop his head up otherwise i don't think we would have found him here we probably would have gone off to treehouse down to look to see if he was potentially drinking and missed him completely what are you listening to Jacqueline, you're wondering if the leopard's eyesight will deteriorate as they get older. Um, yes, so their eyesight is going to get worse as they go. They'll develop, um, potentially develop glycomas or cataracts. Um, and so their eyesight will worsen as they get a little bit older, much like us as people. Um, but it's still very good. And either way, they're still going to have great eyesight. And if their eyes are damaged, we have seen a number of females with one eye and they're still able to do just fine out here. They will use their other senses like hearing and their whiskers and their sense of smell to be able to be successful. So we know that Safari, Karula's mother, she had one eye for six years and she managed to survive all the way up 
to over 19 years old which is incredibly old for a leopard so you know they they are able to deal with the loss of sight in one eye and, and as they get older i'm sure their eyesight is not quite as sharp as when they're a little bit younger what are you watching it's funny to watch him he's still got a bit of youth in him he's very kind of twitchy and lurks around all over the place and any movement sort of triggers him to have a look you'll find with more adults or older leopards when they have carcasses like this so somebody like Tingana he wouldn't worry too much at all he'd be kind of even if there was a rustle in the grass behind him he'd kind of maybe open his eye but he wouldn't be nearly as alert as what Hosanna is I'm sure he's very thankful for the breeze that is blowing today because without that I would imagine he'll be one hot cat it's gotten very warm and especially in the sun now it's starting to feel like there's a bit of a bite to it so i would imagine he's pretty happy of the wind that's blowing